For those that have followed the course modules sequentially, a lot of material has been covered so far. Now, let's attempt to put some of this knowledge to work and take a look at a mock-up representation of an internal data center. Take a moment and review the diagram that is depicted here. There are CCTV camera locations, different camera types, card readers, biometric scanners, and even a man trap protecting the internal environment. I recommend that you start looking at blueprints or even making simple diagrams of your own to map out your environment and to get a better understanding where all of your controls build upon one another so that you can determine if you have any single points of failure. Try to image what you would need to bypass these controls as an attacker and then calculate how long it would probably take someone to actually pull that off. Then make sure that these timeframes and difficulty requirements are in line with your environment's risk appetite. It is not so important for the CISSP test that you know how to do this, but it is an important mindset to have as a security professional. You want to make sure that you get to a point to where you have a good balance of safety, security, and convenience as appropriate for your specific needs. In this module, we reviewed various access controls such as locks, safes, vaults, and alarm systems. We have discussed various lock bypass techniques and should by now understand that locks are deterrence and delay mechanisms that can be bypassed. We have discussed the role that human resources can play in our overall security posture when we talked about administrative controls. And we have taken a look at how some of the controls we have discussed in the last three modules can be used in conjunction with each other. The CISSP test is known for being one inch deep and miles wide, and this is not an exaggeration. The best thing that I can think of to manage the overload of information you run across while preparing for this test is to understand how everything works together as a system. This will help with memorizing the finer details such as how many pins a lock should have since you will be able to associate the material with other controls. In the next module we will dive into the concepts involved in designing safe and secure operations. Thanks for watching.